Hi, we're out on our range today, and that hissing you hear in the background is water heating up on the stove. Now, recently, the people at Right On Trek sent me something they call next generation backcountry meals, asked me to review them, so here we are. Now, it comes with a few caveats. One, manufacturers occasionally send me things, ask me to review them, and I have stressed many times, that's okay, but I'm going to do an honest review of it. Two, my sincere apology to the people at Right on Track that it's taken me so long to get this done. I should have done it a couple of months ago. Some other things got in the way, but I'm not interested in making excuses. My sincere apologies. However, three, sending me nasty grams, telling me to hurry up and get on with it, is not going to cause the process to be any faster. Four, when I get done with this introduction segment, I'll move the camera over here so you can see me from the side, get a better view of what I'm doing. And five, this has to be done in real time, and I only have one package of various different types of things. So there are no do-overs. You're just going to have to put up with me tripping over words and syllables. Out here on the range, things are real. Back in the studio, things can be fake. That's why we don't film back in the studio. Okay, now with that, we have a few different things. We've got savory mountain grits, cheesy mushroom egg scramble, and you see some of these have something stuck to the back of them. This has grated Parmesan cheese and three seed and sea salt flatbread cracker. We also have broccoli beef stroganoff with the sea salt cracker and some Wisconsin vintage cheddar. We have hearty beef bolognese, bolognese, B-O-L-O-G-N-E-S-E, -E, bolognese. I have no idea. Uh, we'll see what it is when we get to it. Chicken Alfredo pasta. And backcountry chili. Now, it tore off, but this was attached to this. And we also have Effie's homemade light and sweet corn biscuits. And some Wisconsin vintage cheddar, some hot sauce, and something called chocolate XOXOX. Strong dark chocolate. Well, we'll see. So, let's start with something breakfasty, our cheesy mushroom egg scramble. And it's got the instructions right on the back. How to cook cheesy mushroom egg scramble. First, add six ounces of cold treated water to pouch, seal, shake. Warm pot on low heat and add a thin coat of beeswax. We don't have beeswax. Add oil to coat the pot. Pour egg mixture into the pot. Cook on low heat, stirring gently every few minutes. When moisture is nearly gone, turn off the heat and fluff eggs. Enjoy. Yeah, it actually says enjoy right here on the label. Some other things on the label are made in Montana in small batches, keto, no gluten, vegetarian, cooks fresh in eight minutes. Okay, so let me move the camera so you can get a better view of what I'm doing. Let's see how it turns out. Okay, the first thing I've done is open my can of Red Feather brand pure cream free butter. We don't have oil, we're gonna use butter. And yes, this really is just butter in a can. The next thing I'm going to do is light this second burner on the stove. So, we don't have any beeswax, but we do have butter. So we'll get that going. Then we'll add six ounces of cold, now they said treated water. I'm going to infer that they meant that you're in a backpacking situation, so they're reminding you, make sure you treat your water. Well, this water came out of the tap at my house, so I'm sure. No, it's not really heavy on, I've just refilled the bottle. Oh, there's our olive oil. So we'll put about six ounces of water in there. That's about that much. Put that in our pouch.
Now, there's nothing on here to seal the pouch, like a Ziploc bag. So I'll just fold that over. Fold it over again. And we'll shake. Anybody remember that terrible television commercial about shake and bake? Where a kid says, It's shake and bake and I helped! Yeah, and if you're watching, you know who you are that reminded me of that commercial. I'd managed to suppress that memory. But anyway, we'll shake this up. Okay. And then, we'll read our next instruction. Okay, pour egg mixture into the pot. Now, my butter here is starting to sizzle quite a bit. I'm going to go with we need a little lower heat. Cook on low heat, stirring gently every few minutes. And if I seem reluctant to put this in here, remember there's no going back. Put that in there. And it looks like scrambled eggs. And it's cooking up like scrambled eggs. Now, it says stir every few minutes. Scrambled egg stuff like this, depending on how much heat you're using and so forth, and whether or not you have beeswax, you might have to stir a lot more often than every few minutes to keep it from sticking to the bottom of the pan. And that's what I'm finding here. And I gotta tell you, it's it's really looking pretty good. like it's just about done. So we'll turn the heat off. Now, a couple of things. When you look at this, you can see little bits of what look like green pepper, maybe some red pepper, things like that. And when I say this, please remember, I'm not kidding. Little bits of stuff like that in something that you're cooking in the field, they add color, they add texture, they can add taste. And what they also do is hide the little bits of leaves and pine needles that fall into something. So they can really be a big help. Now, this is still pretty hot. Yeah, I'm gonna let that cool for a moment. And, while we're letting that cool, let's get out our little packet of Parmesan that came with it. Well, that was a little packet. 
And it came with three of these three seed and sea salt flatbread cracker. Well, it's more like a crumble now. If that's an easy opening package, I can't figure it out. It's a cracker with sesame seeds on it. And it's pretty good. I'd say if you're backpacking, you gotta be careful about having that in your pack where it's gonna get crumbled. Okay. Let's try our cheesy mushroom egg scramble. That tastes like eggs. It's got good consistency too. Even without beeswax, we managed to get it cooked. Okay, that tastes like I actually put eggs in there and chopped up some stuff and cooked them. That's really good. Now, give me a moment to get my pans all cleaned up. We'll go on to the next thing. Now let's try some savory mountain grits. Cooks fresh in seven minutes, and the instructions are boil about 12 ounces of water. And we've got 12 ounces of water in the pan. It's coming to a boil right now. Then turn down the heat, add all ingredients to pot slowly, stirring to avoid clumps. Cook on low heat, stirring for about two minutes. Turn off heat and cover for five minutes. And again, enjoy. Yes, that's right there on the instructions. Okay, so our water is boiling. Then we turn down the heat. Add all ingredients. Remember to remove the desiccant pack. Looks like there's only one in there. Add all ingredients, slowly stirring as we do to avoid clumps. Well, some of the stuff was kind of clumpy when it came out of the bag. So I might add, crunch up the bag a little bit, get the clumps out before you put it in there. that for about two minutes. Then, also resist the temptation to throw this away until you're done so you can keep reading the instructions. Then turn off heat and let cover for five minutes. Now I'm not going to make you sit through all of that. So I'll stir it for another minute or two and then we'll let it sit. We'll see how we did. Now we've got it covered. It's got a couple more minutes to go. But while we're waiting on that, let's try some of our Wisconsin Vintage Cheddar Pasteurized Processed Cheese. Not processed, processed cheese. From Gilman Cheese Corporation. Okay. Now, before I even try this, it's called Vintage Cheddar. I understand the concept of aged cheese, but when you say it's vintage, Makes it sound like you got it off eBay in an ad right next to the ad for this coat. I was like, is this antique cheese? Okay, let's see how our grits are doing. And 
they're starting to get thicker. We're going to give that a couple more minutes. Okay, our grits have sat for over five minutes, and our package very clearly reads 12 ounces of water. But it looks like I put in too much water. It looks like significantly more than 12 ounces. These grits are a little more liquidy than I think grits should be. Let me show you a close-up view of them. And as you can see, that's a little soupier than I think grits should be. But the proof of the pudding is in the eating, so let's give them a try. Okay. They are just a little thin, but actually as I'm eating them, they're starting to thicken up a little bit. And they've got some crunchies in there. I guess savory mountain grits have bits and pieces. Looks like they've got the same kind of green peppers and things like that that the eggs did. Which is okay, but to me, grits are kind of like a breakfast cereal, like cream of wheat or malt meal or oatmeal. These are not that. So if you're thinking that grits should have brown sugar and cinnamon in them, this isn't it. But if you like the same green peppers and things like that that were in the eggs, then okay. And this particular thing, I would have to say that when it comes to the 12 ounces of water, it would really help if you had something to actually measure that and if anything, err on the side of caution with less water. But let's go on to the next thing. Now let's try some chicken alfredo pasta. Boil about six ounces of water. Okay, it's boiling. Add all ingredients to the pot, cook on low heat for three to four minutes, stirring occasionally, turn off heat, and cover for three minutes. Enjoy. Okay. This has a little packet within a packet. Ingredients, chicken meat, salt, okay. Now this is the kind of package that I could just tear open and I find that usually when I do, I tear it and it goes everywhere. I'm just gonna cut it open. However, it's chicken alfredo pasta that gives you a take on just how much chicken is in there. And add all the rest of the ingredients. Make sure you get the desiccant pack out. Now, this reads very clearly, boil about six ounces of water. And I gotta say, that does not look like enough. But, we saw the problem with the grits. So when all else fails, follow the instructions. And it's got some chicken and some pasta and some stuff that I guess you'd call Alfredo. And we'll let that cook for a few minutes. Now, six ounces of water isn't very much, and so it was really shallow in this pan. So I switched to this pan. That way the pasta was at least able to get down into the water. I also discovered that I needed to add a little more water than just six ounces. So now we'll cover that, let it sit for a few minutes, and taste it. And now let's put our chicken pasta Alfredo on the plate. Do that this way so you can see it.
And our pasta feels like it's cooked. And it is. Okay. For me, that's just about perfect. But the Ziploc baggie that was attached to it, crushed red pepper, Parmesan cheese, extra virgin olive oil. So if you wanted to add more taste to it, you could. And as we're with the grits, I thought I put in 12 ounces of water, but it seemed like too much. In this case, I thought I put in six ounces of water and it wasn't enough. I had to add more water. So, hmm. but yeah, assuming you like chicken pasta alfredo, this is really good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Give me a minute to get this cleaned up and we'll try our hearty beef bolognese. Bolognese. And we'll not only see how it tastes, but maybe we'll figure out what that is. Now let's try our beef bolognese. Bolognese. Bear with me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. Boil about 10 ounces of water. It's just now coming to a boil. Add beef and noodles to the pot and boil for three to five minutes. Turn down heat, add all remaining ingredients, Cook for two minutes, stirring occasionally. Turn off heat and cover for three minutes. And again, the last instruction is enjoy! Complete with exclamation point. They've all had exclamation points. Now, I won't bore you with the long story of why that particular word has a bad connotation for me, especially when it comes to food. But suffice it to say that I wouldn't put that instruction on anything. So, add beef and noodles to the pot. So, that looks like your beef. And again, it's not that this packaging would be too hard to tear open. I think it'd be too hard to tear open without spilling all of it. And then your noodles are in here. not a decimal pack. Okay. And boil for three to five minutes. Okay. I will tell you another anecdote, though, and I'll try to get it done in less than three to five minutes. Back in the 1970s, infantry troops in the field were commonly issued sea rats. It's a cardboard box about so big, and it has cans in it. A can of peaches, a can of pears. You'd have a little can of crackers and a little can of peanut butter. And then you'd have a can of beans and franks or whatever kind of thing like that. And there was other things in that as well. Uh, in the 1980s, they did away with those, and that's when MREs came out, which is a plastic bag and inside that are cardboard boxes and inside the cardboard boxes are foil pouches of things and so you'd have a foil pouch of ham slice or baked beans or chicken a la king was one back in those early days okay when i first went into the military it was only a couple of years after mres first came out and so they were still in a stage where they were coming out with new things and changing things occasionally but in those early days they were just meant for efficiency, and nobody really thought that you should have a package that makes it sound good. So you'd open your MRE, and here's your foil pouch of, it's just baked beans in some kind of tomato sauce, but it actually reads on there, bean component. You also had something called turkey, comma, diced, comma, with gravy, or beef, diced, with gravy. Things that just did not sound very appetizing. So. As the years go by, somebody with some brain power started saying, let's 
put labels on this that make it sound like something someone would want to eat. Now, here's a good example. I know these aren't MREs, but still. Beef stroganoff, okay, that's something that you can comprehend. The problem is, where we were too far on one end, we went a, too far to the other side, and I end up with troops coming to me, showing me a package and saying, Sergeant First Class Harold, what's country captain chicken? Well, I don't know, and I don't know what was country, the captain or the chicken. Or was it Captain Chicken, kind of like Captain Kangaroo? And so, when you come to me with beef bolognese, that pops into my mind. And I can just imagine a private coming to me and saying, what's a bolognese? Now, hopefully, the connoisseurs of this are going to be a little more sophisticated than some of the troops I worked with. But to me, you have to take that kind of thing into consideration when you're labeling food that's meant to be eaten in the field. Okay. Now we'll add the rest of the ingredients, which appears to be some kind of spice packet, and it's not labeled. Stir that in, then we will turn down heat, cook for two minutes, stirring occasionally. Get that all stirred in. Okay, and I won't make you sit through the two minutes of this. And now we've turned off our heat, and we've got our hearty beef below knees covered, so we'll let that sit for another minute or so. Now, what was attached to the back of this is another Ziploc baggie. This also has grated Parmesan, our vintage cheddar, and a package of three seed and sea salt flatbread cracker. You know, I like to think of myself as somebody who isn't feeble, but you know, this package is kind of hard to open. And it's got seeds. Mm. And that cracker definitely requires some water handy when you eat it, but those are really good. Okay. Now we'll put our beef bolognese, which is just ground beef, pasta, and some kind of sauce. And it looks like I finally managed to measure the water right, because I think that's just about the right consistency. And if I were in the field, and this were going to be dinner, and so I've been in the field doing physical activity all day, this looks like it would be just about the right amount for one person. Well, if that one person was me. And following their instructions, <clears throat> excuse me, on how long to cook it, pasta seems to be cooked just the right amount. And it's got enough beef in there that you don't feel like you're getting shortchanged on the beef.
again, I'm going to have to say that is good. Okay, we've only got two things left, and I wouldn't make you sit through the process again. But the process, especially for the beef stroganoff, is interesting. Boil about seven ounces of water. Okay, we're doing that. Add the broccoli, beef, and mushrooms. Turn down the heat and cook for three minutes. Turn off the heat. Add the powder mix and stir. Cover for three minutes. Enjoy. Okay, so let's see what's in here. Desiccant pack. Okay, so I'm going to say that that looks like the broccoli, beef, and mushrooms. Put that in there. Turn down the heat and cook for three minutes. Now I'm going to say if you're cooking this in the field and you're going to cook it for people other than yourself, take a look at that. So far it does not look appetizing, so I'd suggest don't let anybody see you cooking it. So we'll cook that for three minutes. I won't make you sit through that. Now it's been about three minutes. We're going to turn off the heat and add the powder mix. another one of those things where I can foresee it being very easy to try to open this and have it tear and go all over the place. Stir in the powder mix. cover for three minutes and we'll see how it turns out. And now let's put our broccoli beef stroganoff on the plate. And let me show you a close up of what this looks like. I gotta say, it does not look appetizing, and it doesn't look like there's very much broccoli in there. But, again, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Okay. Let's try some backcountry chili. Okay, one more entree, backcountry chili. Now, boil about 12 ounces of water. I'm doing that. Turn heat to low. Now that's interesting. Other instructions have read, turn the heat down. This specifically reads, turn heat to low. Add entire chili mix to the pot, except cheese. Cook for five minutes, stirring occasionally. Turn off heat, mix in the cheese, and enjoy. Okay. Now that's not labeled, but I'm going to presume that's the cheese. So, boiling, turn heat to low. Add entire chili mix to the pot except the cheese. There's corn in this chili. But no desiccant pack. Cook for five minutes, stirring occasionally. And I won't make you sit through that five minutes. And now we've let it cook, we'll turn off our heat and stir in our cheese. Now for this, we didn't have to let it sit covered for any amount of time. Just had to cook it for a few minutes, stir in our cheese, which is proving to be more difficult to stir in than I thought it would be. 
and stir in that cheese. Okay. Now. chili in the plate. I noticed when putting the chili mix into the pan that it had corn in it, as I mentioned. It also had rice in it. Now, there are some people who think that it's a terrible thing to put beans in chili. Put some water in that pan so it doesn't stick. Oh, and yes, I have been washing out the pan and cleaning the utensils between each thing we're cooking. But to get back on task, I've been known to do some outdoor cooking, Dutch oven cooking type of things. I've actually won a couple of Dutch oven cooking contests, and one of the things I cook in the field is chili. And some people think it's terrible to put beans in chili. I think it's a key ingredient. And so when I make chili, it's got beef, beans, tomato sauce, chunks of tomato, spices. Well, so for me, this has corn and rice, which I would never put in chili, and does not appear to have any beef or beans. So I'm incredulous, but let's give it a try. You know what this tastes like? When you go to Taco Bell and you get just a bean burrito, except for the texture of the added corn, it tastes just like a Taco Bell bean burrito. These days in MREs, you can get a foil pouch that's tortillas. If I had a few of those to add to this, that would be good. So as kind of a tortilla filling. I think this would be good. But it is not what I would call chili. Now in terms of heat, some people think chili should be really hot. I don't. So for me that's just about right. But if you think it should be hot, it comes with some the flavor that you savor, Kalula hot sauce. No. It also comes with two other things. Effie's homemade lightly sweet corn biscuits. Cornbread goes with chili. And this is a biscuit more in the English sense. Of course, it's broken. You pull out the biggest piece, you can see it's not what a lot of us here in America would call a biscuit. At Christmas time, when you buy that tin of butter cookies, that's what it tastes like. Not bad. really look, <clears throat> excuse me, looking forward to is the chocolate XOXOX. -X -X. And it is just a chocolate bar. It's been through a little bit of heat. 70% cocoa content. you like to eat a chocolate bar because it's sweet and you like candy, that's one thing. But if you actually like chocolate, that's good. That's, that's really good.
Okay, give me a minute to get all this put away and we'll have a brief recap. Now there's a couple of things I wanna add. First, I wanna reiterate that every one of these items had instructions that I'd consider very clear, very easy to follow, but they were all just a little bit different. You really do have to read the instructions. And what I'd wanna add is if you're gonna take something like this on some kind of backpacking trip, you really should also take something that allows you to accurately measure water. I think that's very important. And I want to add that I only had two criteria in deciding which of these were good and which were not, and that's did I like the way it looked and did I like the way it tasted. And I can't tell you what you're going to like the look of or what you're going to like the taste of, so really we're just talking about my opinions. And let me recap some of them. That egg thing, very good. The grits... Again, to me, I think grits are more like a breakfast kind of thing. So I'm going to put brown sugar, cinnamon, maybe some fruit. So I didn't really like these grits, but if that's the style of grits you like, yeah, I think they were pretty good. The chicken Alfredo pasta, very good. The hearty beef bolognese, despite having some fun with the name, very good. The broccoli beef stroganoff, not good at all. And that corn and rice chili thing. If I had something like that in the field and I also had some MRE tortillas, I think that'd be great. So there wasn't really anything wrong with that particular item. It's just not what I would consider to be chili. But the real bottom line here is going to come down to this. As I'm filming this here today, my deer hunting season is going to start in just a few days. And when I go hunting, I'm going to leave my vehicle with just my backpack, walk in a little ways, and set up camp. Now, the distance between where I park and where I camp is only about a half mile, so it's not an arduous trek, but still, there's no water in the area. So I'm going to say that carrying dehydrated food is contraindicated. I also don't want to hassle with carrying my little camp stove and my fuel and my little camp pan. I'm just going to take things that are very convenient to eat cold, like Chef Boyardee, Campbell's Chunky Soup, Van Camp's Pork and Beans. However, in a few months, I'll do a field exercise where I'll be in the field for a few days in an area where there is a lot of water and I have to take my stove and fuel anyway because I'll be going with a few people, one of which is someone who cannot function at all unless he gets coffee in the morning. So I'll have to have the stove and fuel and something in which to heat water anyway. And so when I go on that, yeah, our right on trek meals will be in my pack. So until we do that, don't try this at home on what you call a professional, and thanks for watching the Right on Track Dehydrated Food Review video.